Yeah. So always, you know, um, talk to your doctor. And I think that's the most important thing. You don't go, don't, don't start looking for um, different facilities to get your NAD done because you got to get a doctor and, ha- and make sure that doctor understands because um, Dr. Kumar is, you know, I've been working with NAD uh, with, with, for doctors since 2016 and Dr. Kumar is one of my doctor and, but he has been utilizing it in his practice and the stories that he sent me, the pictures and uh, how happy his patients are. Did you want to share a little bit about, um, you know, some of the results you got from uh, some patients who were survived COVID, but were having a yeah. hard time with it? Yeah. So the, one of the biggest success stories, and again, I, my first patient was a 32 year old woman you know, fully functioning in the community, came down with uh, long COVID, I mean, with COVID in late November. This was before we got the vaccine of 20, 2020. And uh, she recovered fairly quickly with very little issues. I mean, 32-year-old, healthy, recovered. But then starting around February, January, February, major mental health issues, major mental health issues to a point where she was even admitted to a psych hospital for seven days and they had no clue what they were doing. I mean, nobody had any clue. I mean, I think the the information about long COVID was just kind of coming in and we were beginning to realize what it was, but we couldn't have, you know, any idea on how to confirm that diagnosis. It was all based on symptoms. And then uh, basically we had no way of uh, managing them, just no way. So since I was getting involved with NAD with so many other things, you know, I said, okay, let's try NAD out, IV. So we gave her three days of uh, NAD IV. And within about the second day, she, you could see the difference in her mental capacity, be able to focus better, you know, offer uh, psych medicines. And, you know, so we continued on at least once a week for a couple of weeks. And she basically got her life back. You know, I mean, that was as far as mental health issues are concerned. The other condition that I've been able to see was, and this is kind of weird, a 35-year-old uh, male came to me. He's, he's a nurse anesthetist at one of the local hospitals in Palm Beach. Again, I'm going to be talking about some sexual function. So, you know, if there are kids on call, make sure they don't listen to this. <laughs> this is not for <laughs> kids. But anyway, um, so functioning really well, but came down with COVID and stopped. Uh, his whole sexual function just stopped, just quit on him. Stopped. So he comes to me for some of the sexual function stuff that I do, you know, uh, in terms of the technology and stuff like that. And then once he gave me this story, I said, you know what? I have no idea. You know, I have no idea what, what's going on. But, you know, at the age of 35, it's not a, a, a blockage of the blood vessels. I don't think it's a vascular issue. Uh, you know, so why don't we just give out NAD? You know, so I gave him one session of NAD uh, just on the offhand that it was going to help him. And uh, Tanya, I don't know if you remember this. I sent you a snapshot of his uh, text message. Yeah, I know. Uh, That's why I was, I was hoping yeah. you share that story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was rocking it the next day. Like the whole night. He said, oh my God, Kumar, you won't believe this. You know, so basically... Sexual uh, dysfunction is one of the issues that we are beginning to see. Again, it's a it's a it's a symptom that not a lot of men women want to discuss. Uh, but you know, so since I do some stuff in the sexual medicine arena, people call me with all kinds of issues. So I found out that you know, giving that NAD restored his sexual function. You know, it was not anything else. It was not his testosterone levels. Because at the age of 35, we really don't expect a whole lot of testosterone, even though we do know that maybe long COVID has, will probably put a dent in, in the hormone levels of patients. So that's another issue that we need to make sure that we kind of balance out. And again, we are beginning to learn a lot more stuff on long COVID. In fact, this is one of the f- first papers that has come out, actually nailing down some kind of uh, a causative um, factor for uh, long COVID symptoms, you know, which means mitochondrial dysfunction.